Mac is a proud corporate partner of Texas Tech Athletics. Unstoppable. The excitement of Texas Tech men's basketball. KMAX Red Raider Nation presents Countdown to Tip Off. Good morning and welcome into Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Tip Off. David Collier alongside Eric Kelly once again as we get you ready for round two of Texas Tech and Oklahoma State, which tips off at noon today at Historic and these days pretty empty gallagher Ivor Arena. Yeah, football school. They love Canadian football over there <laughs> in Stillwater. And the way you say it, round two, makes it sound like <laughs> round one was super competitive. I'm just quoting the head coach. The rematch we've all been fight. waiting for. That, that one round is when the Red Raiders just sat in the corner and waited until the next round. I think exactly. Yeah. yeah, they played the Floyd Mayweather defense yeah, and just it, didn't get hit. Exactly. All right, we'll, we'll talk much more about this matchup coming up. It's Guns up versus pistols firing, right? The two sayings. We'll tell you why the Red Raiders are likely to win a long-distance shootout. Yeah, later not today. exactly what we'd say year to year. Also ahead, our friends from Oklahoma City catch us up on the Cowboys after a Big 12 win. And later, it's another edition of Crashing the Boards, our unique way of breaking down this matchup. Headlines. Uh, a lot of questions Eric's thought of, and I better find out some answers. And we got to spell right this time. I'm as getting well. my inner professor out by getting all these questions. I don't even know you. what you're talking about. Red Raiders heading into today's game on a three game winning streak. The Cowboys haven't won three straight since late November. But Mike Boynton's bunch is playing a lot better of late after dropping their first eight Big 12 games. The Pokes have won two of their last three, including a win over K State on Tuesday. I think an argument could be made, and I would defend it, that Oklahoma State's playing the best basketball of their season. They're playing some of the best basketball in all of college basketball right now. Again, two of their last three. Uh, they're getting great contributions from different people on their roster. Uh, they're playing great offense and defense, so just like the first time we played them. Yeah, those two wins against, honestly, a struggling Kansas State team that's tied with OSU for last and I think we would both agree here. TCU might be playing <laughs> yeah. the worst basketball in the Big 12 right now. So maybe not two quality wins. But probably more impressive was the fact that they lost to Baylor. Yes, it is a loss. But that was a one-possession game with 14 seconds yeah, I think left. you could argue if it wasn't for a call by the refs, refs, Oklahoma State could have come out with a victory. If you're in Stillwater, that's yeah. what you're saying. If you're in Waco, Waco, you're saying, oh, we just outplayed Oklahoma State. That's just how it goes. But listen, that... I think Oklahoma State, it's weird. They played really well at the start of the mm -hmm. season. Lost Isaac Likely, didn't play well. Got him back, still didn't play well. But we've seen this, we've seen this before. I mean, Chris Beard talked about uh, how this is kind of the team that we expected them to be. Listen, Oklahoma State was bad last year, right? Yeah. And then gave Texas Tech a really, really good game. With Lindy Waters, yeah. And, I mean, like you mentioned, Isaac Likely had just come back from whatever it was. The, his health issues that he was dealing with. Definitely not 100% here in Lubbock, and he looked like it. He only scored two points in that game, didn't have many assists. When you have really good three-point shooters, you can either be hot or you can't be hot. That's just how it goes sometimes. Yep, and that's, that's when the weirdest of teams in college basketball, especially in this era where anyone can beat anyone. Uh, funny you should say that. It's time to fill in the blank. Let's bring in Phil Mayer now, joining us live in the newsroom. Uh, yeah, Texas Tech shooting threes, they've, that's been a big part of their success of late. But on the flip side, not so much with Oklahoma State, right, Phil? Uh, the Pokes three-point shooting is blank. Pretty, pretty bad. And, uh, you know, it's been rough all year for Oklahoma State, but uh, in conference play, it's gotten even worse. They're shooting just 28% from three, 28.1% in Big 12 play. And, I mean, when you look at their guys, uh, Thomas Iagua can shoot it pretty well, but Isaac likely not a shooter. Cameron McGriff hasn't shot the ball well this year. Uh, Lindy Waters has slumped big time. And uh, it's just not overall a great three-point shooting season for the Cowboys. And another thing that does is that when you have guys that can't shoot, you can pack the paint, help off those shooters, and it makes things even tougher inside. Their two-point percentage hasn't been great, especially since the turn of conference play either. And, you know, you never know when a team's going to get hot. It could be today. They could go off and shoot 50% from three against the Red Raiders. But the numbers this season have really not been good. And uh, with the way Texas Tech's been scoring so far this season, uh, the Cowboys better hope that some of those threes fall to keep up with them. we got to make our blank now for yeah. filling the blank longer. Doing longer right now, right? Pretty, 
pretty good. Yeah, he's got three blanks there. It's a little Larry David uh, version. Fill in the blank, blank, blank coming up yeah. later. <laughs> Appreciate it, Phil. All right, time for our first break here on Countdown to Tip Off. When we come back, we head to OKC for a recap of the week that was for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And still to come, we pick our teams for the week. I wonder who has the first pick this week. Couldn't be me. <laughs> Might be.